around 1998, one woman's quest for the perfect pair of white pants led to the creation of a revolutionary product. Today, in the Happy Accidents podcast, we're shining the spotlight on Sarah Blakely, the woman who went from selling fax machines door to door, yes, you heard that right, to revolutionizing the world of shapewear and creating a multi-million dollar empire with her company, Spanx. Hey there, friends. This is Dennis Geelan, author of the Happy Accidents newsletter and the book, The Accidental Solopreneur. Welcome to another episode of the Happy Accidents podcast, where we dive into true stories of wildly successful people, products, or businesses, all of which can trace their success back to a chance encounter, a serendipitous event, or a fluke invention. In each episode, we unravel the tales of unexpected triumphs and the remarkable journeys that led to their incredible success. I'm on a mission to explore the fascinating world of happy accidents, and I'm thrilled to have you along for the ride. So, why should you tune in? Well, besides the entertainment value of these incredible stories, there's a hidden treasure trove of lessons we can learn from them. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a creative mind, or simply someone who enjoys a good narrative, this podcast is your go-to source for inspiring stories and valuable insights. Get ready for a roller coaster of surprises, a dash of luck, and a sprinkle of wisdom. This is the Happy Accidents Podcast, where success meets serendipity. Let's jump into today's adventure. Okay, before we dig into the story of Sarah Blakely and Spanx and really look at what happened there, what was the happy accident and how did she capitalize on it, I want to take a step back for a second and dive into the concept to contrasting theories or worldviews of convergence versus contingency. This is going to play a large role in a lot of the discussion, a lot of the stories, and hopefully a lot of the interviews that uh, you end up hearing here on the podcast, this, this concept. So convergence, convergence versus contingency. Convergence, uh, this is the everything happens for a reason school of thought. So in this line of thinking, the belief is that we're all moving towards something and it's going to happen no matter what. It's kind of a predestined, this is, this is what your life is going to be like. This is what we as humans are working towards. This is the goal that we're all, or the end point that we're all striving towards. And those little decisions that we make or the actions that we take, they have little to no impact on the end result. We are moving in this direction. Contrast that, so that was convergence, contrast that with the line of thinking or the school of thought of contingency. So in contingency, this is the stuff happens theory. This is the belief that everything we do matters and we're all interconnected. So we might be moving in a certain direction, but then some sort of random event happens, somebody makes a different decision and we start having these different branches going off and our trajectory, our end result, our future becomes very different than the trajectory we were on. So for example here is a small decision like hitting the snooze button one morning could end up having a profound impact on how the rest of your life might play out. That's the contingency theory. Whereas the convergence theory would say, it doesn't matter if you hit the snooze button today, you, you know, you might, your train might be a little late, but you're still gonna be on the same tracks. So with that in mind, I want to just read you this quote from a great book that I've been reading called Fluke by Brian Kloss. And this is really going to frame this discussion before we dive back into the Spanx story. So listen to this quote from the book. This is from page 13 of the book Fluke by Brian Kloss. Here's what he says. Imagine our lives are like a film and you could rewind back to yesterday. Then, when you reach the start of your day, you change one small detail, such as whether you stop to have coffee before you rushed out the door. If your day stayed mostly the same, whether or not you paused to have your coffee, then that would be a convergent event. So Kloss kind of uh, argues that there's both. There's convergent events and there's contingent events in our lives. So he's saying that would be a con convergent event. The details didn't matter much. What happened was bound to happen regardless. 
I was a little bit late. I stopped for a coffee. I hit the snooze button. My day still pretty much unfolded the way it was going to. And as I said before, the train of your life left the station a few minutes later, but followed the same track. However, he says, if you stop to have coffee and everything about your future life unfolded differently, then that would be a contingent event because so much hinged on that one small detail. And he's saying we experience convergence and contingent events continuously all throughout our day. We don't know what's going to be a convergent or a contingent decision that we make. We don't know what's going to be a convergent versus contingent action that we take, but we experience all of these. And sometimes we stay on track and sometimes it takes our life in a completely different direction. I want to give an example. So let's use his example of coffee and hitting the snooze button. So let's say you're a person who in your morning routine, you like to get up every day and make yourself a coffee at home. That's the first thing you do. And then you kind of ease into your day. And you know, you give yourself 45 minutes to an hour to kind of have this morning routine. And the first thing you do is coffee. Well, let's say one day for whatever reason, you're up too late the night before, whatever, you just couldn't sleep well. You decide that morning, I can't get out of bed yet. I'm going to hit snooze. I got like 45 minutes to an hour for my morning routine. I can hit snooze. And then you hit snooze again. And then you hit snooze again. Now you're getting to the point where you're like, oh boy, I've only given myself like 15, 20 minutes here to get up, get ready, get out the door and get on my way to work. I can't stop and make myself a coffee. I'll just go through the drive through or I'll stop in at this coffee shop along the way and I'll get them to, to make me coffee and I'll drink it when I get to the office. And you get to this coffee place, you strike up a conversation with one of the people working there. And you think, wow, I really have something in common with this person. We had a bit of a spark there. I kind of enjoyed that. Maybe tomorrow I'll do this again. And for the next few days, you keep going back to that same coffee spot. And next thing you know, it's not just conversations you're striking up with this person. You start a relationship. You start to date. Maybe fast forward a few years down the road and you're married. You've got a kid on the way. Would that have happened if you didn't hit snooze that one day and decide to venture into that coffee shop? That would be a contingent event. Hitting snooze changed the complete trajectory of your life. You probably never would have met that person. You certainly would have, wouldn't have married them. And even if you did end up meeting that person six months later, Everything would have been different. Your courtship, your dating, you probably wouldn't be married on the same date, which means you wouldn't be the same child that's coming out at the end of the day. That was a completely contingent event. The course of your life was drastically altered, according to this contingent theory, because when you trace it back, you decided to hit the snooze button that day. So let's bring this back. What the heck does this have to do with Sarah Blakely? and Spanx. Well, let's dive into her story and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to rewind a bit here and, and let's look at Sarah Blakely's history. What's she doing to set the stage for this eventual happy accident to come her way? Well, back in the day, Sarah, as I mentioned, was just an average door-to-door -door salesperson. She was hustling fax machines to make ends meet. Little did she know that her skills in sales and persistence would one day lead her to start a company that would change the game of women's undergarments forever. So it all started one day when Sarah was getting ready for a party. This was a company party. And she realized that she had a, she had a major wardrobe malfunction. The problem was there was no undergarments that was going to work for her favorite pair of white pants and still allow her to wear the sandals uh, as her footwear that evening. She just couldn't make it work. I wanted to wear these pair of white pants. I wanted to wear these sandals. I wanted the right undergarments that was going to work. I cannot relate to this. I, I'm a man. I just throw on whatever and do a quick look in the mirror and, hey, looks good. As long as my wife gives me the thumbs up, I'm out the door. Women, I know you guys have to put a lot more thought and care into this, and that's exactly what was going on for Sarah Blakely this night. So in a stroke of genius, or maybe desperation, she cut the feet off of a pair of, of pantyhose, and voila, Spanx were born. Blakely decided to take this idea for the new product and run with it. It was, it was perfect. 
it, it, it made the fit right. It made her allow, allowed her to wear the pants she wanted with the footwear she wanted. Um, you know, it was a brilliant, easy, simple idea born out of this, you know, frustration or desperation, this random happy accident that just kind of happened that day. But the journey for her was just beginning. From there, Sarah faced numerous challenges and rejections in her attempts to get her product produced and sold in stores. But remember, she was a door-to-door -door fax salesman. She is a salesperson. She knew about sales. She knew about persistence. She knew how to convince people. So she never gave up. And eventually, a buyer from Neiman Marcus took a chance on her, and the rest is history. Spanx has become this wildly successful multi-million dollar empire offering a wide range of body shaping undergarments for both women and men and all because of one woman's innovative solution to a common problem blakely herself notes that countless women have reached out to her to say that they were cutting the feet off their pantyhose for years but are kicking themselves because they never thought to pursue this as a business idea but it was blakely who had both the idea and the persistence to make it happen. So now let's go back to this concept of contingency versus convergence. I like to play this game of what if, especially with these happy accident stories. What if Blakely never had this background um, in door-to-door -door sales? Would she be savvy enough to get this company off the ground? Would she have the persistence that she needed to be able to convince somebody to start producing this for her? Or did that lead to the other? But let's take it a step further. What if she wasn't going to this party? Or what if the party was uh, during a different time of year when she didn't need to wear these white pants with her open-toed sandals? Would she have then had to make that decision to try and find the right undergarment? What if, what if, what if, or was she on this path to be this great entrepreneur and it was going to happen regardless? It's so fun to play what if. But in this case, all the stars aligned. She had the background. She had the sales. She had the persistence. She had this entrepreneurial mind. She had this frustrating problem. She had the ingenuity to solve the problem. She then had the capacity to recognize this opportunity and then had the boldness to capitalize on it. All of those things had to come together in what I like to call a happy accident to create this massive success that we now see as Spanx. Pretty cool to think about it like that, right? What if? What if one of those things didn't happen? Would she have ended up where she is today? Or was she always on that path? So the next time you encounter a serendipitous situation like this, just remember the story of Spanx and how one happy accident can lead to a world of success. Okay, we're not done yet. Let's dig into some fun facts about Sarah Blakely and Spanx. And then I'll leave you finally with some lessons that we can all learn from this. So starting off with the fun facts. Sarah Blakely created Spanx in her apartment with only $5,000 in savings. When she got the idea, she actually moved, <clears throat> I'm not sure why, but she moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and decided, I need to start this company. And with only $5,000 in her bank, she had the, the perseverance and the ingenuity to, to really get this thing off the ground. Spanx itself, spelled S-P-A-N-X, actually comes from the word Spanx, S-P-A-N-K-S, which is just a slang for tight pants. So if you're wondering where the, the name Spanx came from, there you go. comes from Spanx. Another fun fact. In 2012, Sarah Blakely became the youngest self-made female billionaire in the world. Crazy. Another fun fact, Spanx has been featured in numerous TV shows and movies, including Sex and the City, The Devil Wears Prada, and worn by countless celebrities, including Oprah Winfrey, Sarah Jeff Jessica Parker, and Gwyneth Paltrow. And finally, our last fun fact, in 2020, 
Sarah Blakely pledged to give away half of her wealth to charity through the giving pledge. Wow, that's some philanthropy right there. Okay, let's, let's end this off with some lessons learned. This is an incredible story, but there's lots we can all take away from this as well. So Sarah Blakely and Spanx, what's the, the first takeaway lesson here? First one is solve a problem you personally face. I hear so many people talking about, uh, you know, if there's just a problem out there I could solve, you know, I have the smarts, I have the background, I have my MBA, I have sales, whatever. I'm sure I could get a... a, a the business off the ground and make something of it. I just need the idea. Well, look at Sarah Blakely. She just had this minor annoyance, this minor problem, and she solved it. So if you're having this problem, chances are other people are having this problem. Can you come up with a solution that's valuable enough for them to see the value in solving that problem with your solution? Sarah Blakely created Spanx after being frustrated with the lack of options for smooth, comfortable undergarments. By identifying the problem she faced, she was able to create a solution that filled a gap in the market. Lesson number two, be persistent. Sarah Blakely faced numerous rejections when trying to get Spanx into stores, but she didn't give up. Her persistence paid off when she eventually found success. Lesson number three, think outside the box. Sarah Blakely took a unique approach to shaping undergartens by using a footless design. She cut the bottoms off pantyhose. Her innovative approach helped set Spanx apart from other shapewear brands. And the final takeaway lesson for you here, believe in yourself. Sarah Blakely took a risk by quitting her job and starting Spanx with limited savings, but she believed in herself and her idea. Her self-belief combined with her hard work helped her turn Spanx into a successful company. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Happy Accidents podcast. I hope you find these stories as intriguing and insightful as I do. But make sure you don't miss an episode. You can subscribe to my Accidental Solopreneur channel on YouTube and watch these episodes in video form or subscribe to the Happy Accidents podcast on Apple and Spotify for your listening pleasure. Until next time, stay lucky, my friends.